Okay, in the previous lesson, we learned about carboxylic acid as a homologous series. Okay, and it contains this functional group called the carboxyl group. So this carboxyl group contains a C double bond O and OH. And this H is acidic, which means it can dissolve in water, dissociate to form H plus ion. So all my carboxylic acids, they are weak acids. And then we also take a look at the full structural formula of all the acids from methanoic acid to butanoic acid. So methanoic acid contains one carbon atom, butanoic acid contains four carbon atoms. And then the general formula is CN, H2N plus one, COOH. And for carboxylic acid, the N starts from zero, okay? Because the first carbon is already accounted for in the functional group. So all of them are weak acids and they follow the same reaction as all other acids. Okay, they will react with carbonates, bases, and metals. Okay, then we also take a look at how are carboxylic acids formed. Okay, they are formed via the reaction called oxidation. They can be oxidized either by oxygen in the air or by oxidizing agent. And then we also take a look at a new reaction where carboxylic acid can react with another homologous series called the alcohol group. So the carboxylic acid has this functional group, okay? And then the alcohol has the hydroxyl functional group. And these two functional groups will come together, okay? And they will produce a new functional group called ester with C double bond O, O. And this OH and H will release to form water. So this reaction is called esterification. And the condition for it is concentrated H2SO4 and warm under reflux. So they will form an ester, there's a sweet smell, and all of them will contain this functional group, the ester group. And then we also take a look at why do we form esters? Okay, because they have commercial uses like perfume, flavoring, nail polish, etc. So this was what we covered in the previous lesson. And moving on to the last lesson. Okay, we will move on and complete the last chapter of organic chemistry. Let's take a look at this picture here. So I'm not sure how many of you visited this ice skating rink or have seen this in Marina Bay Sands before. Okay, so this is the ice skating rink that was opened by two-time Olympic medalist, okay, Michelle Kwan. And if you have been there before, been there as in skated there before, you realize that it is a bit different. Okay, in fact, this ice is not really ice. Okay, this ice, in fact, is a very high-tech plastic. Okay, and the name for this plastic is called polyethylene. So we learned this term in alkene, where we saw how alkenes can undergo addition polymerization. Okay, so a lot of ethene monomer, a lot of ethene monomer, they were joined together to form a long chain. So this long chain is what we call macro molecule okay so today's learning objective will be um, seeing how small units which we call monomers they will come together to form a large molecule called a macro molecule so if you take a look at this diagram here you realize that i have many monomers and then they are all joined by covalent bond all the monomers are joined by covalent bond Okay, then they form this large and long chain polymer. Okay, so macromolecule, okay, they are all made out of covalent bond and they are all made out of non-metal elements. It is a giant covalent molecule. Then we also take a look at, okay, we revisit this part where how polyethylene is being formed, okay, from the monomer called ethene and the typical uses of polyethylene. In fact, polyethylene is everywhere. Okay, so recap, okay, we have a monomer that is ethene. They have C double bond. So what happens is that the double bond will be broken. Okay, so you open up the double bond and they can join with each other. So this double bond will be opened to form CC single bond. And then they will just join together to form one long chain of polymer. Okay, so if you observe in this reaction, all I do is just join them together. I join them together to form one long chain. So in this case, no other 
molecules were produced. Meaning, they are all joined together, they are all added together to form one big compound, to form one long chain. So this is what we call addition polymerization. Okay? So this is called polyethene, forming from many monomers called ethene. So where can you find polyethene? Okay, you can find it in plastic bottles, your plastic bag, all of them are polyethene. Okay, so below your plastic bottles, you will see such recycling logo. It tells you the different types of polyethene. So another name for polyethene is polyethylene. They are the same. They're just polymers of ethene molecule. All right. So um, we also take a look at how to deduce the structure of the polymer from the given monomer and vice versa, meaning we work backwards. Okay. So today, the most important part is to learn new types of polymer. So other than polyethylene, okay, where you make from um, alkene, we also take a look at how other polymers have different functional groups. So two new polymers that I'm going to introduce will be polyester and polyamide. Okay, so we will take a look at polyester first. So when you see this term ester, I want you to straight away think of this ester functional group that we have learned under carboxylic acid. So just to show you, okay, this is a partial structure of a polyester. Okay, so if you take a look, the ones that are circled, okay, you notice that eh, now I have more than one ester functional group. Okay, before that, we only learned about the formation of one. Now I have more than one. And then of course, uh, why are we learning all this or why are we forming so many different types of polymers because they have different uses. Okay, and last but not least, the problems that um, we human beings create because of all this um, synthesizing of plastics. Okay, and they are non-biodegradable. All right, so recap esters. Okay, so ester is formed from ethanoic acid and alcohol. Okay, so esters is formed from carboxylic acid. Okay, carboxylic group and then my alcohol group. So these two functional groups, they can come together to form an ester linkage. Okay, so one more reminder, carboxylic acid, okay, this is acidic. Okay, acidic H+. plus. Okay, whereas for ester linkage, this O is bonded to a C. So this is a ester linkage. So ester linkage, okay, usually or rather most of the time they all have this carbon here. Okay, and during esterification, water is produced. Water is a byproduct. Okay, so it's like a jigsaw puzzle, okay, with one functional group. And then you have ethanol with another functional group, okay. And these two, they join together to form one ester linkage. So they join together to form one ester linkage, but at the same time, water is produced, okay? So what happens if I have a jigsaw puzzle that looks like this? Instead of having one side, I now have two opening, two functional groups. And then I have another jigsaw puzzle with this, and I can join them together. So now, what will happen? What will happen if I have these three joined together? So imagine this jigsaw puzzle coming together, I will form one linkage here and I will form another linkage here and I can continue with more jigsaw puzzles. Okay, so this will bring me to the next part, okay, where we learn another type of polymerization, which we call them condensation. Okay, so where do we see polyester? Okay, we see polyester in most of your clothes, okay, your synthetic fabrics. Okay, if you look at the, the, the shirt label, okay, you realize that they will tend to say 100% polyester. Okay, and of course, if you are aware, okay, these are all your laundry icons to tell you um, how you take care of all these fabrics. So for polyester, okay, usually you cannot use bleach. So this is um, do not wash with, do not use bleach. Okay, then this one is do not tumble dry. Okay, don't tumble it dry. This one is wash using warm water. All right, so let's take a look. Now, what we learned before that is only a carboxylic acid 
and and alcohol. What happens now is I have a di carboxylic acid. Di means two. Okay, di alcohol means two alcohol groups. Okay, so if you've seen the previous slide, you notice that I can join them together continuously. Okay, so in fact, I join them for this group. Okay, I react this one esterification form H2O. I can still react, meaning I can have another di alcohol group here and then I react them to form H2O. And then I will form a long chain. Okay, now what is this rectangular thing here? Okay, it's just to tell you that this is your hydrocarbon. Okay, so this rectangular thing can be any chain. That means it can be a CC bond, it can be a CC double bond, etc. Okay, so for example, I use this as an example, my di alcohol. Okay, it can be like this. Okay, then of course I have my hydrogen. Or it can be like this. I also have my two hydrogen group. Okay, so whatever that is inside this center, inside this, in between this, doesn't matter. They will not take part in the reaction. Or we assume that they don't take part because it's going to be confusing. So we just take a look at the functional group. So whatever is inside the rectangle is arbitrary. Okay, so to make this clearer, okay, I have two functional group now for both. Okay, so this is my monomer. This is my monomer. And if you notice, first of all, I have two different functional group. Okay, when these two functional group comes together, H2O is formed. Or H2O is released. Okay, so in this case, it's not just a simple esterification. We call them condensation, polymerization. Okay, why condensation? Because during this polymerization, small molecules such as H2O are released. Small molecules can be any other small molecules. Doesn't mean uh, water. Okay. So this is a polyester because it has an ester linkage. Not just one, many. Okay. And if you notice, this is my bracket to tell me that this whole thing is my repeat unit. Okay. So can we take a look at your notes now? Page one. All right, so let's take a look at what's condensation polymerization. So condensation polymerization is where small molecules such as water, they are being produced when monomers are joined together to form a polymer. So fill in the blank. So how are monomers joined together? They are joined together via covalent bonds. So during condensation polymerization, the monomers, they must have two different functional groups. Okay, so they must have two different functional groups. So if you look at the previous example, it will be a carboxyl group and hydroxyl group. Okay, so these are two different functional groups. So when these two functional groups are joined together, okay, there is a removal of small molecules such as water or other small molecules. So some examples will be HCl. So in some reaction, HCl can be produced instead of water. Okay, we will take a look at this when we try some questions. Okay, so there are two main groups of condensation polymers. One is called polyamides, one is called polyester. So polyester means I have many esters group. Okay, polyamides means I have many amide group. So this is a linkage. So we have an ester linkage. We also have an amide linkage. All right. So we will take a look at terylene first. Okay, we'll take a look at polyesters first. Okay, so can you take a look at your notes page two first? Okay, we'll complete polyester first. So polyester means that it has many ester linkages. So in polyester, we will have two monomers, one that's called dicarboxylic acid and one that's called diol. So the term di, okay, the prefix di means it contains two of them, two functional groups. Okay, so diol means two hydroxyl group, dicarboxylic means two carboxyl group. Okay, so when these two monomers combine, they form a polymer called terylene. 
Okay, and this terolene contains many ester linkages. So what is going to happen is here. Okay, so I have one diol monomer and two dicarboxylic monomers. Okay, assuming it's continuous. Okay, we are just looking at a small segment of it. All right, so the OH of the carboxylic acid and the H of the hydroxyl, they will combine. Okay, and they will form water. So if you take a look at this, okay, this OHH will combine and undergoing condensation polymerization, they will form a part of a polymer. So this is a segment. Okay, you realize that I have my ester linkage here. In fact, I have more than one. Okay, and then I'll have my water as byproduct. So each, each formation of the ester linkage will have one water molecule produced. So in this case, if I have two ester linkages, okay, I will form two water molecules. Okay, so in this structure here, terylene polymer, I will have one white color rectangle box and one shaded box. Okay, so if I want to work backwards, if I want to work backwards, uh, it's the same. I will separate the two oxygen. I will separate the two oxygen. Okay, if you notice again, if you notice again, this ester linkage, okay, one oxygen is from the carboxyl, uh, one oxygen is from the carboxyl group. Another oxygen is from the hydroxyl group. So if I want to work backwards, I want to break them apart, I will separate the two oxygen like this okay so if i see this okay oh this one has one oxygen bond here so this is my diol whereas this one has a c double bond o c double bond o this will be my dicarboxylic acid okay so this is how we work backwards all right so the repeat unit of terylene molecule is this so this is the repeat unit meaning this whole chunk will repeat many times. Okay, so I have one monomer here, okay, which is the dicarboxyl group or dicarboxylic acid. And then I have another one, which is the diol. So these two groups will come together, these two monomers will come together to form the repeat unit of terylene. Repeat unit means this whole thing will be repeated many times. Okay, so page three of your notes, let's take a look at this. Okay, we'll try a question first. So in this question, they tell you that it is a terylene and it shows a repeat unit of this polyester. Okay, so once you see terylene, straight away, you know that it is a polyester. So the name of this, you need to know. Okay, the name of this, you need to know. So once I see um, presence of this, okay, I will know that it's an ester linkage. So what I will do is, I will separate the two oxygen, okay, by cutting the covalent bond. So I will separate them. This is my monomer one, this is my monomer two. Okay, so what I will do is, I will copy and paste, okay, this monomer. And then, I will do the same for the second monomer, okay. Now, if you take a look at these two monomers, you realize that they are incomplete. So I need to complete this two monomers, okay? So I am forming an ester linkage and it is from a carboxyl group plus alcohol group. So I need to complete it by making sure that I have an alcohol group or rather the hydroxyl group by drawing a H here. And then for my carboxyl group, I'm missing a O and a H, O and a H, okay? So these are my two monomers. This will be called di carboxylic acid, and this will be my diol. Whatever that's inside the rectangle, okay, it's not important because they are not going to participate in the reaction. All right, so the question says, what is the functional group present in each of the two monomers? Okay, it will be my carboxyl group, okay, and my hydroxyl group. So they have to be two different monomers. Okay, so if you take a look at this example here, I cannot be having a diol reacting with another diol. Okay, reason being, I cannot just break like that. Okay, because there's no such reaction. Okay, 
So that is why this will not happen. Okay, it has to be it has to be between the carboxyl group and the hydroxyl group. So if you notice, I still have one more oxygen here. I still have one more oxygen here. Okay, if I do it this way, if I do it this way, I will have a missing oxygen. So this reaction will not work. Okay, so this reaction will not work. Right, let's take a look at the last example. Okay, the last type of polymer, which is called polyamides. So polyamides, they are formed by amide linkage. Okay, so they are found in this polymer called nylon. All right, so nylon is commonly used in um, surgical tools, okay, whereby they use it to stitch the wounds together. So likewise, I will have monomer with two functional groups. One is called dicarboxylic acid. And one is called diamine. So this is a new functional group that we are seeing today. Okay. So same thing. Whatever that's inside here, I don't care. They're going to take part in my reaction. So this is how they will combine together. Okay. They will combine to form polyamide. The name for it is also called nylon. Likewise, water will also be formed. Okay. So this is page one of your notes. So let's take a look. So what's happening is... Okay, I also have two carboxyl group and then for my diamine, I will have two amine groups. They will have my OH from my dicarboxylic acid and then they have my H from my diamine. Okay, so if you notice, if you notice, it is always my OH from my carboxylic acid. Okay, and then they will com combine with the H of the diamine. So this is the full structural formula of functional group. Okay, so this is the full structural formula of the functional group called amine. Okay, so I'm going to draw here. So this is my amine group, amine functional group. So likewise, I will combine them together, undergo condensation polymerization, and we will also release water. Okay? So this is called my amide linkage. This is called my amide linkage. Previously, we see as ester linkage. Now, we see as amide linkage. And this amide linkage is commonly found in your body in this huge polymer called protein. So, protein is made up of many amino acids and they form amide linkage. Okay, similarly, we will try the question first before we move on, page 3. Okay, so page 3, okay, we have this question on nylon. So when you see nylon, straight away, it is a polyamide. So it has many amide linkage. So amide linkage looks like this. Okay, so this is the amide linkage. And then if you recall, this is your ester linkage. So for both of them, Okay, the rest of this is a carbon. Okay, but we don't care about the carbon. We are only interested in this one, which is the linkage. Okay, so in this case, if I work backwards, okay, I realize that eh, there's no oxygen, so I don't know how to see. Okay, don't worry. The C and the O always together. Okay, then whatever is bonded to the C, you break. Feel it as though this O and this N, they are the same. Okay, so just treat it as them, they're the same, then you just cut them in the heart. Okay, so this is the monomer, okay? So this is monomer 1 and this is monomer 2, okay? Now, part A, they want the repeat unit. So they want, in this polymer, they want to see the repeat unit. So if I take a look at this, I realize that this, okay, is one, one pattern, pattern number one. And then this part is repeated the second time. Okay, so which means this is repeated. Okay, I repeat. Is this and this together, they are repeated together. Okay, so the repeat unit, repeat unit means it repeated quite a few times. So this chunk here, the one that I highlighted in blue, this chunk is the repeat unit. 
So when I draw the repeat unit, I will draw from the polymer. I will shade accordingly to the rectangular box. If it's not shaded, then I also don't shade it. Okay? So this is the repeat unit. Repeat unit means they ask you to find the pattern. And this is the one that's being repeated many times. So in this case, I don't need to draw another box or I don't need to draw the H. Okay, because I'm talking about repeat unit. So this part here is repeated. You can also give me the bracket. You can also remove the bracket. Both are fine. Okay? So without or with the bracket, both are fine. They are called repeat unit. Okay? Let's take a look at the next question. Draw the structures of two monomers. Okay? So if you look at it, okay, I already cut them into half. One of them will be a dicarboxylic acid. Okay, so I just copy and paste first. Another one is a diene. So you realize, hey, I'm talking about monomers. Okay, it's full structural formula. So I must make sure that it's bonded properly with all the necessary atoms. So this one is my dicarboxyl group. And then missing one more H. Huh? This is my diene. Okay, and this is what we call amine functional group. Alright, so this is for the next question. Okay, now let's try the last question on the last page. Okay, because we have learned about amide linkage, we have learned about ester linkage. Let's try the last question. Now they tell you that this is one organic molecule X. Okay, so whatever we learn, they are the simplest way. They are the simplest way. So there are many other variations. Okay, so they tell you this molecule X, huh? What is different? So I have a molecule X, okay, and then it contains a carboxylic group, okay, contains a carboxylic group. It also contains an amine group. So see, now I have a monomer, I have this as my functional group, I have amine as my functional group, okay, and then they tell you, this straight chain molecule contains six carbon. So whatever that's inside here is six carbon atoms. And they are all bonded in a straight chain manner. And then there's this term that we have not seen before called self-polymerization. Meaning, it undergoes polymerization by itself. So this is what we call only one monomer. Okay, previously you see I need two monomers, right? With two different functional groups. Now in this case, it undergoes only one. And it undergoes self-polymerization. Okay, so it's reacting with the same unit of itself. Okay, so now they tell you, they tell you that this, okay, molecule formed this long chain. So this is part of the chain. And then they ask you to find out what is the structure of this molecule. So they're asking you to work backwards. So if I look at this, okay, I must identify the linkage. So I identify this as my linkage. This is my amide linkage. So I identify this as well. All right. Now, I need to separate them. I work backwards. The C and the O always together. The rest, I just cut. Now, take note. Nah. Please don't cut like that. This is not correct. Not correct. Okay. The C and the N must never be together. When you want to separate them, they must never be together. So I separate them like that. Okay. And then I separate them like that. Okay, so if you notice, this is one. Okay, and you realize that this is another one. You'll notice that they are the same. Okay, they are the same. Okay, I have one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so it tells me that this molecule has six carbon atoms. Okay, meaning... This whole thing, this whole thing, including the C here, is six carbon atoms. Likewise, one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, I have one, two, three, four, five, six. Six carbon. So what I'm going to do now is I need to draw the monomer. Okay, so I'm going to draw the monomer now. Okay, I'm going to draw six carbon atoms first okay and then i draw one 
C double bond O. And then this C is bonded to my N. Okay, so I need to complete them. I need to complete my monomer. So I know that this is a carboxylic acid. Okay, contains a carboxyl group. And then it contains an amine group. Okay, so this is my amine. So the answer for this is like that. So this is what we call the monomer. Okay, and don't forget, don't forget to fill in your hydrogen. Because they want you to draw the structure, right? So you need to include the hydrogen as well. Okay, so this is the monomer, including the hydrogen. Alright, so this is the last question. Okay, so after we look at addition polymerization and condensation polymerization, okay, we also need to distinguish the two. How are they different? So addition polymerization is when unsaturated carbon molecules react to form a long chain. So my unsaturated carbon, CC double bond, they will break to form CC single bond. So in addition polymerization, no molecules are eliminated, nothing. Nothing is being eliminated. Whereas for condensation, okay, I will need two functional groups and they must be different. Okay, so they combine to form a long chain and during condensation polymerization, Small molecules such as water or HCl can be eliminated. Okay, now take note. Okay, this monomer, this monomer can be one type with two functional group. Okay, I just write Fg. Or it can be two monomers with two functional group. Okay, what do I mean by this? This one type with two functional group will be the same as question three. Okay, the one where we see they self polymerize. Okay, this two monomers with two functional group will be the one we also seen for terylene and nylon. So I have two different functional group on two separate monomers. That means I need two types of monomers. Okay, so take note. The idea is I need two functional group. So this is the idea. Whereas for addition, I just need CC double bond. As long as I got CC double bond, I can react. Okay, so addition polymerization. Okay, to recap, it is just the CC double bond. I break and then I combine with all the monomers. Okay, to form one long chain. Nothing is produced except for this polymer. Whereas for condensation, okay, my OH and my H will combine and then will produce H2O. Okay, and this can continuously react with more monomers. Okay, so if you take a look, I will need two different functional groups to react. Okay, two different functional groups. One, two, then they combine. Okay, then they form ester linkage for terylene. Or they can also form amide linkage for nylon. Okay, likewise, what is it eliminate? Okay, so I have two different Functional group, one is carboxyl, one is amine. So together, they will undergo condensation. So to recap today's lesson, okay, we take a look at how macromolecules are formed from all the small units, which is what we call monomers, and they are joined together by covalent bond. So macromolecules, they are giant covalent molecules. Okay, so the first example of polymer that we saw was during alkene. Okay, where all the small units called alkene monomers, they are joined together where the CC double bond are being broken to form my polymer. Okay, so during this polymerization, all the CC double bonds are broken and they form a polymer. So this reaction is called addition polymerization. So polyethene, they are a typical plastic where you can see it used in plastic bottles, plastic bags. Okay. And then we move on to take a look at a different kind of polymer, okay, where it contains um, linkages such as ester linkage and amide linkage. So for both types of polymer, okay, we see how it is being formed from monomer. And we will also work backwards where we deduce the monomer from the polymer. Okay, so these are the things that we have learned so far. Alright, so for 
nylon and terralin, they are formed via condensation polymerization. And during condensation polymerization, small molecules such as water are eliminated. So the common uses of terralin and nylon will be fibers. Okay, they are usually found in clothing, okay, fishing lines, sleeping bags. And last but not least, okay, we will need to be aware that plastics are non-biodegradable, which means that they cannot be broken down. So last point will be the pollution problem by plastic because plastic cannot be broken down easily, okay? So they cause pollution problems such as land pollution. Okay, we have to create a lot of land space to clear these plastics. And it takes very long for them to be broken down, so they are considered non-biodegradable, okay? So that is the end of macromolecules. So whatever we learn in secondary school chemistry, okay, for organic, is uh, just a very small portion, okay? When you go to tertiary, education, you will learn more complicated reactions and you will learn that organic chemistry is very beautiful because one reaction can lead to many different products. Okay, so hope you enjoy chemistry so far. Thank you.